Howdy. Do you have the problem where you're trying to put gas in the gas tank and at the fuel pump and it keeps clicking off? Well, let me show you the parts that you can replace to fix that problem. So here's your fuel tank and I've laid these out roughly how they are laid out in the car. So the front of your car and engine would be down here. The back of your car would be down here. You would put fuel in somewhere here. Okay. And then your fuel tank tucked up underneath driver's side of the car, fuel pump. But let me briefly just show you the, the three major components. So we have this guy right here. I'm going to try to use their proper names, uh, meaning the names that show up if you uh, search for these parts on Amazon, or what AC Delco calls them anyways. So this is called, this little part here is one of the pieces of the EVAP system. This is called uh, the vapor canister uh, purge valve. This is located on top of the engine. Uh, it has the wires that control the solenoid and then a hose that connects there. And this just mounts into the top of the engine. That hose connects here. Alright, so there's one component of the EVAP system. Second component is the vapor canister vent solenoid. This is my old one that I pulled out and it has a solenoid here the vent is here and has a tube that goes from here to the vapor canister this is kind of the hub of the evap system uh, hence why everything is named you know vapor canister vent solenoid vapor canister purge valve that piece down there and then the actual vapor canister itself and it has a line that goes from here to here there's a line that goes from here to uh, that connects into the tank and I'll explain these lines in a minute. This is the fuel tank, fuel pump there in the middle. And then it has this line which uh, connects to, let's see, these two guys. So the big one connects there and the little one connects to that small one. And this line just runs all the way down the, this, uh, runs all the way down the fuel tank and then to that purge valve ultimately. Okay, so there's the three components, this one, this one, and that little guy down there. Let me explain how all these lines work. They all tie into the EVAP system with the exception of this one line, which you see it runs straight this way. That's the one that runs the fuel to the engine. So the fuel pump in there is just, that's what it's actually pumping the fuel. All the rest of these lines are related, are just air lines. Uh, that are part of that EVAP system. So somewhere over here is where you would uh, you put fuel into the tank and it's got a big pipe. That big pipe connects to this big opening here and then there's a smaller tube that connects here and also runs up along that pipe and connects in near where the nozzle for the gas pump goes in. So there's another little line that runs up here. Okay. Then we have these two lines connect to the vapor canister and as I said this one just runs along the length and goes to the engine to the valve and then you have kind of the big the main evap line which runs there and then from here this is where it gets a little weird a little confusing so you'll see the big line runs here and then there's this little um, insert here as a little loop so there's a couple, there's two different places where it does this, where another, an additional line gets added to this big one. So this particular loop actually goes all the way down here and runs to this connection. So it actually goes to the fuel pump. So back to here, we're following the main line down. We're following the main line down. And then there's another little loop into it. And this line show it here. This line runs back this way and runs to here. Nope, sorry. I'm not paying attention to the camera. <laughs> runs here. So this little line, which ultimately runs to where you put in the gas, runs along this big hose for a little bit and then it it attaches into it right here. Okay? And 
then this big line continues on and attaches to this end of the fuel tank. So I think I covered all the lines. So ultimately, the big line runs to the canister, does a loop, and runs to this end of the fuel tank. And then you have a little line that comes off of that main line that connects into there. And then you have another little line that connects to this main tube that runs here and up to where you insert gas. And then you have this small line that runs from the canister to the front of the engine. And then the other, so again there's three here, the other line runs from here to this component. All right, hopefully that made sense. I know these lines are kind of all over the place. But essentially they just connect all of the pieces kind of to the hub of the system, which is the vapor canister. So I've given you an overview of the system. Now let's talk about how to troubleshoot the system and how to determine what piece you need to replace and some things you can do here. The first place that I would check, first thing I would want to uh, understand is the vapor canister. So this guy, when it goes bad, it's got a filter in here. Essentially just keeps all the carbon bits inside and allows air to flow through these lines. That uh, filter, uh, sponge-like thing, it goes bad. And when it goes bad, these little bits in here of carbon fall out. In fact, if I just tilt this a little ways, see? There's the carbon bits just pouring out. Obviously they should not be doing that. <laughs> These little bits get into the lines. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's kind of a rattling sound coming out of these. And that's because those little bits are in all of these lines and they clog it up. So in my case, I've replaced this piece, this piece, and the other piece down there. And the system still doesn't work because I haven't purged these lines yet which I'm going to do shortly with an air compressor. So the first thing I would check is uh, to determine whether or not you have these bits all in your lines. You can do that by pulling off one of these hoses off of the vapor canister and little bits will start pouring out. Um, and then once you have it disconnected, if you kind of shake the line a little bit, you can hear those bits rattling around. Another place to check, it's pretty easy to access, probably the easiest to access, is this, this uh, purge valve. So this is mounted on the engine. If you pull off the hose that's attached here and look inside, you may have some carbon bits. I did. I had them, uh, you know, so, so all the way in the engine bay, right? So they've traveled all the way from the back of the car from here, all the way down this line. And then this line connects to another line that then connects to this. So I have carbon bits potentially from here all the way down that line and back to the carbon canister. But it's another place that you, that's pretty easy to check and see if you have those bits. If you have them, then that means you're going to have to clean these lines. And unfortunately, that means you're going to have to drop the tank. You may not have to drop the tank entirely, but you do have to drop this tank at least enough to pull off this line so that you can blow air through it. And I would also disconnect it here, or disconnect all these lines basically. Um, all of these and blow air through it. So that'd be the first thing I check. Do you have carbon bits? If so, you're going to disconnect all these lines and blow air through them. That also means that this carbon canister needs to be replaced. So that'd be the second thing I do is replace that. Next, if you're still having issues and your engine still uh, still have an engine code still throwing codes related to this system, you're going to want to check your solenoids. Um, this, so this obviously has a solenoid, let me show you here, the solenoid piece, but this also has like an air filter, it's essentially an air filter in there. That's going to go bad. If it were me and I'm just trying to fix this system once and for all, I would go ahead and replace this whole system anyways, because it's got that air filter that's going to break down and go bad over time. Same with this guy, they're just, they're just going to fail at some point. Um, but you can also, if you want to check and see if the solenoid's good, you could put 12 volts on these two connectors there and, you know, listen for clicking. That gives you a clue as to whether this is working or not. But ultimately, I would just go ahead and replace this, replace that, and clean out the lines as a minimum. And then this would be, I guess, optional unless you determine it's gone bad. But you can do the same thing, pull it off, 
put 12 volts to that listen for clicking and you can blow through this to determine whether or not it's it's um, operating properly I would go ahead and just replace this that's what I've done this part is I'm trying to remember it wasn't too expensive maybe 20 bucks or 30 bucks or something so if it were me I would just go ahead and replace that component too but you could troubleshoot it by by um, putting 12 volts to it so that's basically the order that I would do this look for the bits if you see them replace the canister probably a good idea to replace this anyways especially if you've got quite a bit, few miles on your car and then I would replace this and then I would replace that and I'll have links to all these components in the description below um, obviously my exact parts may not fit your vehicle exactly and the exact location of the lines and how they connect the fuel tank may be a little bit different this is a 2005 Chevy Suburban uh, LTZ 5.3 liter flex fuel version so what you have may be a little bit different another comment I wanted to make was on replacing this I noticed most of the videos I've seen people are replacing this not with the exact same part but they're replacing this with a kit that splits this into two so you have just your solenoid piece and then instead of this part with the filter there's another line that goes from here and you take a small box Typically most of the ones I've seen are kind of rectangular boxes and you position it up higher into the frame of the car so that way it is less prone to sucking in dirt and dust and stuff which I think is a great idea and a better uh, system but for me I just felt like if this thing had lasted you know lasted at 150,000 some odd miles that I'm just going to stick with the factory and just replace this exact component and if it lasts me another 150,000 miles I'll be happy. So in my case, I thought it was better and easier to just simply replace this part with the same thing. But there are systems out there, and that was some of the confusing information I found, was I kept seeing people replace this with two different pieces. Um, so that's certainly an option if you want to, or you can just replace this with the exact part that came from the manufacturer, which is prone to issues. <laughs> so probably get some arguments there that this, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should go with the split, the newer split system, but obviously up to you. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Um, again, I've, this is part one. I've got part two, three, and four where I install each of the components of this system if you uh, need help uh, figuring those parts out. And then also I've got a video showing how to, um, some information on dropping the tank on this thing and replacing the fuel pump. So be sure and check those out. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe. Got lots of videos coming on this 2005 Suburban. Thanks y'all.